networking is really important for you to know. As a DevOps engineer, you will be working and creating systems that should be secured, should be scalable with low latency, and you can do all of this only through networking. So in this video, I'm going to explain all the important networking concepts you should know as a DevOps engineer. Not just this, I'm also going to share some learning resources to help you clear your concepts. So without wasting any time, let's start with learning networking for DevOps engineers. All right. So I'm here on my screen and I have a Notion document created with all networking concepts that every DevOps engineer should know, along with some learning resources. So if you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. If most of you want it, I will share this as a PDF on LinkedIn. So without wasting any time, let's start with networking concepts that every DevOps engineer should know, starting with OSI model. The first fundamental networking concept that every DevOps engineer should know is the OSI model. And if you are a computer science student, I'm pretty sure you have heard about the OSI or Open System Interconnection Model, which is a set of standards that defines how different computer systems communicate over a network. In this OSI model, the data that is flowed or the information transferred is broken down into seven different layers, starting from physical layer to data link layer to network layer to transport layer, session layer, presentation, and lastly, as an application layer to the end user. So it starts from physical layer or the con physical connection, which is the layer one, to end user services, which is layer seven. And each layer has its own specific role in managing aspects like hardware, addressing, routing, and application level interactions. So you can read about this here in this learning resource, which has information about each layer. So you can read about it here, the physical layer, what it does, what does the data link layer does, and similarly for the other layers to understand different layers in networking. And this is very important for DevOps engineer to know because you, you will be able to understand and troubleshoot network processes only when you have your ideas cleared about OSI model. But there is still a problem. This OSI model is great to understand how data is flowed or to have a theoretical understanding of network, but it's very challenging to use in practice. This is why we use TCP IP model in which the three top layers of OSI model are combined into one layer, which is the application layer. And these two bottommost layer, which is data link and physical layer are network access in TCP IP layer. So now instead of having seven layers, we have four layers in TCP IP model. And it's quite easy to practice. And as a DevOps engineer, you should also know TCP IP model to troubleshoot some networking issues because we are using this. But OSI is great to understand how is a data transferred, what are different things happening in the backend. Now, most of you might have a question, what is TCP, what is IP? So TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and IP stands for Internet Protocol. And as a DevOps engineer, it is very important for you to understand protocols. So what are protocols? A protocol is a set of rules that defines how data is transmitted and received between devices in the network. For example, I am reading this from a Notion block on my browser, which is using HTTPS protocol. It is HTTPS because it has SSL certificate or else it might be HTTP. So HTTP and HTTPS are web browser protocols. Similarly, if you send a mail to your friend, it uses SMTP protocol. So protocol is a set of rules that define how data is transmitted and received between different devices. The two main protocols are TCP and UDP. TCP transmission control protocol and UDP user datagram protocol. These two protocols define how the data should be transferred. And these two work on the fourth layer, which is a transport layer. So if you read here, it says transmits data using transmission protocols, including TCP and UDP. So let's read about them. So TCP, as we know, stands for transmission control protocol and it operates at the transport layer. It establishes connection between two devices before data exchanges and it ensures reliable and ordered delivery of information. So it will first connect and the connection is initiated. Only then the data should be transferred. So it breaks data into packages, assigns sequence numbers and uses acknowledgement messages to guarantee delivery. It is connection oriented, meaning it sets up, maintains and terminates a connection for data exchange. So remember connection oriented TCP will first initiate a connection and only send the data after the connection has been set up and it will guarantee delivery. Next is UDP, which is user datagram protocol. And it also operates on layer four as TCP, which is a transport layer and it is connectionless protocol. 
So it's like fire and forget. It will send the data but does not care if the data is transferred or if the data has received completely or not. So it sends data without establishing a connection, providing low latency communication. However, it doesn't guarantee delivery or order, making it suitable for real-time applications like video streaming or online gaming. So remember, whenever you have an application where the data is very critical and has to be transferred in an ordered manner, you will be using TCP. Some examples could be be web browsing, email, database connections. And on the other hand, if the data is not so critical and you can handle some data loss, you could use UDP, which can be running on low latency as well. Some examples could be online gaming, or video calls, uh, etc. And I also have an example here. So TCP, as we all know, is connection oriented. It is connectionless, slow, fast, reporting errors, non-reporting errors. And this image here defines that this girl is drinking your water, which is going directly in the mouth. This is why it is TCP. Whereas UDP, here she's drinking the water, but it does not go in the mouth which means it's UDP. And if you don't get this joke, you might be UDP as well. Another kind of protocol is IP or internet protocol, which works on layer three, the network layer, and it handles addressing and routing to ensure that data packets or information should read their intended destinations. The function of this IP or internet protocol is to assign IP addresses to the devices and uses routing table to direct data across networks. So we all know that every computer has its own IP addresses and we share information through IP addresses. And this is done using internet protocol. To learn more about TCP, UDP or IP, you can go to this uh, learning resource. And if you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. Next networking concept that every DevOps engineer should know is ports. So ports are communication endpoints that allow different services on a device to send and receive data. For example, we know HTTP is a protocol that is used to access web pages on a browser. And HTTPS is a protocol, but it has a port number, which is 443. Similarly, we have done many projects on this channel and we use different ports for different services. We all know Jenkins run on port 8080, whereas MySQL runs on port 3306, MongoDB runs on 27017. And similarly, other services or other protocols run on specific port number. SSH runs on port 22. Similarly, DNS runs on 53. HTTP voice runs on 80. So a DevOps engineer should know about ports because they are important in configuring networking settings, defining rules for firewalls, managing container communication, orchestrating services, and troubleshooting network issues. You don't have to remember all the numbers, but you still have to know the most common ones. Well, and if you're not sure, you can always serve the internet. So port number are communication endpoints for a particular service or a protocol. And you can read more about it here on this learning resource, which is in the document. Next, very important networking topic for DevOps engineer is IP subnetting and CIDR range. So this is a process where you divide the used network into smaller subnetworks. And we use this a lot when managing networks on the cloud. A DevOps engineer should understand IP addressing, subnetting and CIDR notation. This knowledge is crucial for designing and managing IP address spaces effectively. For example, if I show you I'm here in the AWS dashboard and I'm inside VPC service, if I click on create VPC, this is the process where I need to allocate the IPv4 CIDR range. And you will be able to understand or you will be able to assign this IPv4 CIDR only when you understand subnetting. So subnetting is a technique used in computer network to divide a larger IP network into smaller, more manageable subnetworks or subnets. Or you can see this picture here which defines that if you use slash 17, you will have 32k IP addresses to use. Similarly, if you use slash 18, 16k IPs can be used, slash 19 will have 8k. So when you create side range here, let's say 10.0.0.0, slash 17 means you get 32,000 IP addresses to use in this particular network. So CIDR block size must be 16, slash 16 and slash 28. Slash 28 here means you will least is 16 IP addresses. And I have explained this very easily in this YouTube video. So you can go check it out to understand IP subnetting and side range. Now answer me this, how do you think an information is transferred from one place to another on the internet? Through routing. So routing is a process of directing data packets from a source to destination across a network and routers uses routing tables and protocols to decide the path for data transmission, ensuring efficient and reliable communication between devices. So you can see here routers are using routing tables and, and it defines where should the data be transferred from one source to another and here, there's a diagram here where you have computer A and the router is defining how should the data be transferred to computer B using different networks. If I show you this in the cloud, 
let's go back to our AWS dashboard. In our AWS inside VPC, we have something known as route tables. In this route tables, we define where should the data go. So if you look at this particular route table, which is RDS private route table, I have routes created, which is saying this particular range should have a target of local, but I can create more routes to it. And I can click on add route option here. In this, I can define the uh, IP range. So let's say all IPs in this particular range should go either to internet gateway or to NAT gateway or to gateway load balancer endpoint. And this is how you can define the path where the data should be flowed. And this process is called as routing. I also have a very nice documentation by AWS, which explains what is routing, why is it important, what is router, and also other information on different types of routing. So you can go check it out. Another important concept is DNS. And every DevOps engineer should know what is DNS, how DNS works, what are different DNS records. So to understand DNS or domain name system translates easy to remember domain names to computer friendly IP addresses, but it's not just limited to that. You can also help find mail servers, balance web traffic among servers, redirect requests, perform reverse lookups and speed up responses through caching using DNS. For example, whenever you buy a domain name, which can be website.com, it is actually connected to a server's IP address. And you as a human do not remember the IP address, which is why we use DNS to map our IP addresses with our domain names. For example, let me show you, this is an IP address, which is actually Google's IP address. If I ask you to access google.com, you will go ahead and do it by running google.com. But I can also do it by IP address. And you will not remember this IP address, maybe after watching this video. So using DNS, you can map an IP address with a domain name. And it's not just limited to IP to domain. You can also do that mapping a domain name to IPv6 address or mapping a domain name to a domain name, mapping all subdomains to another domain name. And similarly, there are other records as well. To show you an example, in AWS, we have a service named as Route 53, which is a DNS service. In this, I have a hosted zone created named as mywebsite.com. This is my website. If I want to create records, I can go ahead and click on create records option here. In this, I can map my domain name to an IP address using a record, or I can go ahead and choose different records to do different tasks as mentioned here in this part. So you can translate domain name to an IP address, find mail servers, balance web traffic, redirect request, and a lot more using DNS. And this is very, very crucial for a DevOps engineer to know because you will be managing DNS records. You'll be creating hosted zone a lot in your role. So to understand this, I have an excellent resource attached here which is by AWS again. And in this, you will understand what is DNS or DNS basics, different types of DNS service and a lot more. So you can also learn more about DNS from here. Till now, we have covered a lot of important networking concepts that you should know. Let's go ahead and understand the next important concept, which is VPN or virtual private network. Security is a very important factor these days when deploying application. And we use VPN on the networking side to make sure things are very secure. So VPN or virtual private network is like a secure tunnel for your internet connection. It encrypts your data and routes it through a server, making your online activities more private and secure. And this is a diagram here which defines how VPN works. If you look here, this is the part where VPN is used and this is the part where VPN is not used. When you use VPN, you have VPN client and a VPN server and the data transferred from the VPN client is encrypted. So the data is secure. Whereas when you don't use VPN, it's not so encrypted, not so secure. So VPNs allow professionals to securely connect to a remote server, access cloud resources, and perform maintenance tasks without compromising data security. It ensures a private and encrypted connection, crucial when dealing with sensitive configurations, deployments, or infrastructure management tasks. To know more on why you should be using VPNs as a DevOps engineer, you can check out this resource, which explains five different reasons on why DevOps needs to use a VPN for stronger security protocol to control who sees what you're doing and for work regardless of location, limitless internet and all the other reasons. So you can go and check out this resource. Not just this, if you look at the AWS VPC dashboard, we have a VPN section where there are different VPNs which are used by companies to ensure security. Now we are almost at the end of our networking for DevOps engineers video, but along with this different concepts, I also have a section which is networking tools. And I have listed down important networking tools that you should know as a DevOps engineer, because these are very, very helpful tools 
when you're working or troubleshooting your networking tasks. The first is ping tool or the ping command and this is used to check if the website or the server is reachable or not. Let's say you have an application if it is not working fine and you need to check it out if it is reachable. You can simply run the ping command. Let me show you an example. If I do ping google.com and if Google is responsive or is reachable, it should give me back some response. So when I do this, it gives me back responses like this, which means Google is reachable. So using ping command, you can check out if the service or the website is reachable or not. Next you have is trace route. Using trace route, you can see the different path your data takes to reach a destination. So you can see what different paths are also how much time it takes. So let's try to run it. I'm going to say trace route and it's going to be google.com again. So let's see. And using trace route google.com, you can find the different path it took uh, for the data to be transferred and also how much time it took. So this is another great networking tool. Apart from this, you have Netstat. Using Netstat, you can list all the network connections on your computer. You can also find different processes running. So I'm going to open up Netstat. Uh, hyphen A is the command. You can also add use another attributes, different attributes to get the response. So when I do netstat hyphen A, you can see different connections running in my computer and these are on the process ID for them. So if I want to stop them, I can also stop it. I use netstat usually to check different ports that I used and like you can do that by running netstat hyphen T U L N P. Using this, you can find out that the port 8 is used, port 631 is used, port 543 is used. So if I'm running an application and if 8 is already used, I can simply go and delete the process. So this uh, this port is available for me to use next time. Similar to this, we have Next, which is Nmap that is used to discover host and services they offer on your network. Next, we have TCP dump to capture and analyze network traffic. Then we have ipconfig for Windows or ifconfig for Linux to check different networking information of your computer. Dick command is used to query DNS name servers for information about host address, mail exchanges. So if you have a domain name and you want to find more information about it, you can use the dig command. Similar to dig is nslookup, which is again used to query DNS servers for domain information. Then we have Wiresh Wireshark. And Wireshark is a very good tool for network protocol analyzer for troubleshooting and analysis of interactions between network component. It captures and analyzes packets of specific network interface. Last you have is iperf. This is used to measure how much time it takes for the data to be transferred. So it measures the TCP and UDP performance of a network. So these are all the different networking concepts and networking tools you should know as a DevOps engineer. So this is the end of our networking for DevOps video. I hope this video was informative. If you found this video helpful, do like this video, subscribe to CloudChamp and let me know if you have any questions, any doubt in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day.